Yep, that's the stuff right there. That's the stuff. So I know I'm a little late uh, to respond to all your comments from last week, but I noticed that some of you were still wondering about my oil leak and if it had been fixed. Almost, almost I think. We put, uh, we got a new service done. One second here. What's going on here? We got a new service on the truck, right? New filters, new uh, seals and everything. And it seemed to do a lot. We also added Lucas oil stabilizer into it uh, this last trip and that seemed to have almost completely eradicated the leak. So uh, I'm pretty confident that the oil leak is nothing serious. Nothing too big and grand on scale. I was talking to my friend Troy uh, whose channel used to be called Halloween Hellmouth. It's now called Beyond 1031. He makes amazing quality videos, actually. Uh, you guys should go check it out. His link is down below in the description of all my videos. It's also on the recommended section of my main page. He does a, uh, amazing like adventure videos with his fiance. Uh, on the weekends, they go hiking up in the mountains of Washington State in British Columbia. And throughout the week, he makes videos every day. He's been doing it for over 3,000 days. It's, it's pretty crazy in a good way. He's an awesome guy, but he's a mechanic, right? And so I was talking to him about my truck and he right away, without even asking him, he's such a nice guy, he went and uh, researched it for me, for free. Didn't even ask me for it. I guess just my friendship in return is enough. <laughs> he's a really good guy. And uh, we may have figured that it might be the, uh, the oil separator on the driver's side of the engine that could be getting gunked up. Like I said, this is getting up like this is over six or getting close to 600,000 miles, 1 million kilometers. And uh, those oil separators can get a little bit gunked up at that time. This truck was running semi-synthetic oil its whole life. So, you know, it only needed an oil change, what, every 55,000 miles or so. It may have been, been done sooner than that or 55,000 kilometers. However, even if you wait that long in between services and have that long of an interval, even though the oil is good for that long, it's not always good for the oil separator. And sometimes gunk uh, can build up in the separator. And he said, once I uh, hit a certain point, it could have just you know dislodged something maybe and clogged up that filter. So I'm thinking that might be the problem. But seeing as the it seems to have corrected now, and I'm not losing very much oil at all, just like. A couple of drips a day which is fantastic compared to what the the two gallons I got in a lost in a day that one week uh, but I'm, I have no white smoke coming out of my truck so I know that uh, my piston rings are still doing all right right now because if they were going I would have a lot of white smoke coming out of the truck so I'm, it's a learning experience right now right I'm more of a driver than a mechanic but I am learning as I go through my career and as things break and as I have to get them fixed I'm learning what things are so the next time it happens, you know, I can pass this knowledge on to maybe my kids one day or someone else. Or you guys, yeah. My YouTube children. No, no, let's not go with that. Let's not call you that. That's weird. And uh, a lot of you know more about things than I do. I'm, I'm just going to be humble and say that there, that uh, I, I don't know everything about trucking. I don't know everything about life. I think I got a good grasp on some things. I know I got a good grasp on other things, but I still learn something new every day. So uh, when I teach you something or when I tell you something through my vlog here, don't take it as fact, especially you new drivers. Don't trust everything I say. Double check it, okay? Double just to make sure I'm right. It doesn't hurt. Even though I'm pretty confident that I'm right, double check it anyways, and I'm open to correction and learning if I'm wrong. That's the only way you can learn. You have to admit you were wrong. Or you have to admit that things are different than you thought they were. But always keep an open mind and always keep the discussion open. You, you never want to shut down people who want to talk about things you may disagree with or tell you that you're wrong. You never want to shut them down. You want to hear them out, hear why they think that way because if you don't listen to anybody, nobody gets anywhere and, you know... There's some situations where if you don't let people speak and you don't let them use their words, there's only one other thing that things escalate to. I don't know, that's why I, I like hearing from you guys in the comment sections and I don't often remove comments, not often. 
because I want to hear what you guys say, you know, good or bad. If you're just being an absolute douchebag in the comments, yeah, I'll probably remove it, maybe, you know, block you from commenting in the future. But for the most part, I, I like the interaction with you guys because I've learned a lot through my comment section, just listening and reading. And it sucks sometimes realizing you're wrong, but it happens. So double check what I say. enough is if you want to do this experiment along with me and if you want to try saving money like this don't be an obstacle on the highway for other people like I, what I mean by that is make it easy for people to pass all right and if they can't get around you I would I would suggest you just don't go the speed limit until they have an opportunity to pass you know, slow down let them get around you and then continue on with your fuel saving speed. There's nothing more annoying than when you're in a hurry and you're on a two lane highway and the speed limit's 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, and there's somebody doing 90 or 55 in front of you and there's no chance to pass. So frustrating, I totally hear you on that. I totally understand that. I know you're already in the comment sections, probably yesterday already yelling at me. I'm not gonna be in your way, I promise. If I see you behind me, I'll, I'll speed up, I'll do the speed limit and I'll let you pass. That's the only thing I ask. And also like when you're on like high traffic highways, like what is it, Interstate 62? Six, interstate 60, which, which interstate is that between like uh, Gary, Indiana and Indianapolis? 60, 69, I'll have to look at it. I haven't been on that highway in a while. I used to go on it all the time. All I remember from that highway is that it's a four lane interstate but it is packed with traffic. So packed that bumper to bumper, all the way from Chicago to Indianapolis, pretty much. Especially during the busy times. In those situations, I wouldn't do 55 either. I would do the speed limit. Otherwise, you're, you're messing up traffic behind you. Everyone's trying to get around you and there's so much volume of traffic. You're just screwing things up then at that point. That's not the time to uh, do these kinds of experiments. So just use your discretion, all right? Let people pass. Some people will uh, no doubt get upset that they had to, you know, move one of their fingers half an inch, activate their turn signal and drag their rig all the way across into the passing lane and then all the way back in in front of you. It's a lot of work for some steering wheel holders and they might get a little grumpy about having to go around you even if there's no other traffic on the road. Just ignore those guys. Just ignore them. They're just angry at life. All right, it's not illegal to go a little slower than the speed limit. It's just kind of annoying <laughs> when you can't get past them. Totally agree with that. But we passed Medicine Hat already, and we are eastbound, which means the next thing we're gonna cross is the border into Saskatchewan. I'm gonna stop in Moose Jaw later on today, uh, go to the gym there, that's that same gym that we stopped at on the way west. It's that little one, remember? But it has easy truck access, I can park right in there a lot, which I really like. I'm gonna go in there, lift stuff up, put it down, and then we're gonna continue. We'll be in North Dakota tonight to sleep. We are, well, we're about seven hours from the border right now. We're gonna cross from North Portal, Saskatchewan into Portal, North Dakota. And make our way across, I believe on Highway 2, across North Dakota, through Grand Forks, into Minnesota, through Minnesota, and into Northern Wisconsin, where we have to deliver to Eagle River, Wisconsin on Monday.
familiar with Saskatchewan here. Probably know where I am. Maybe you need to see these signs first. Moose Jaw. Just gonna go around the corner here to uh, our gym. The same one we stopped at before, I told you that already, right? Stop here for a quick, probably about an hour, and then continue south towards Portal, North Dakota. To our border crossing. They're already uh, waiting for me, well not waiting for me, but the my paperwork is all cleared, and I'm good to cross. Won't be here too long. I've gotten a pretty good routine already. So that when I do stop at the gym, I know what I'm doing. I know what machines I'm looking for. In 700 meters, turn left on Thatcher Drive. Nope, we're going this way, Mandy. I usually have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing before I get in there. So I'm not wasting time trying to figure out what's going on. Like when I first started, I, I, I was honest with you guys and I told you I didn't really have any idea what I'm doing. But I'm getting to the point now where yeah, I can be confident and say, yeah, I know what I'm doing when I go in there. I know what machines I'm looking for. I know how to use them. And I know what I want to achieve. Oh boy, these guys all had to park right around this corner here, eh? Right there, making it just tight for me to get in here. All right, so we're gonna go and uh, Park in the same spot over there off to the right as we did last time. Just gotta turn around. Everything's so muddy right now because it's springtime. The gym's just off to the left here. It's hard to see with that sun glaring at us there. Ay, yeah, everything's so bumpy. Whoo! That felt good. That felt good. Throw that up there. Whew. That was a good workout, Chevy. That felt good. How was your time? Did you have a good nap? Oh, you're a good boy. You know that? You're a good boy. Do I smell a little sweaty? Yeah, it's okay. I'm gonna have a shower later, okay? We gotta get going. Whew. You always feel so good after a workout. Dolphins pumping. Whew. I worked myself pretty hard this time. I was, I was proud of that workout. I, I was happy with it. So now, oh, I gotta get ready to cross the U.S. to the U.S. Gotta get all my paperwork and Ace Manifest ready. All right, time to work. We were here for just over an hour. I find that that's usually how long I spend in there, unless if I want to do some cardio too. Depends how much time I have, right? We're not in any big rush, but at the same time, I don't want to drag my feet too much. I still want to get there relatively early. So we have about three hours to go till we're at the US border. Not sure where we're gonna make it to tonight. down here to Minot, North Dakota. Found a parking spot at the very back corner of the Flying J. 
Unfortunately, the internet here doesn't reach to the back corner of this parking lot. So it was a very good day. Successful day, I think. I got just as far as I wanted to, and we ended up using very little fuel. And I'm fully loaded, right up to my max weights. And I used about as much fuel as I usually do driving empty. <laughs> so this theory of mine and this experiment is working. I just don't know if I'll have the time to do this all the time or I gotta weigh the benefits of taking more time out of my e-log as well, right? Because if it takes me longer to get there, that means there's less time on my e-log clock to make more money. So it's a give and take. You sort of have to decide for yourself. Either get there as fast as you can or try and save some fuel on the way and possibly not get as far. I'm going to continue doing this tomorrow and see where we're at. I'd like to do this for a full month once to see what my what the difference is at the end of the month. I'm just taking a walk into the store here. I'm gonna get myself ready for bed. I'm tired. I'm ready to ready to drop like a rock. Every time I go to the gym and work myself really hard like I did today, I always sleep like a rock that night. It's gonna be such a good sleep.